All right, I think we can go ahead and get started. Uh, did you guys just come over from the uh, Auth0 workshop? Awesome, cool. I was just watching that one. It was a really good session um, and it actually has a little bit of overlap with some of the things that we're gonna look at today. Um, and then if you guys would like, do you guys prefer, um, we're gonna go through um, some different agenda items today. Um, and then we're gonna have a live coding session as well. We're gonna make a sample app. Um, do you guys prefer to follow along um, kind of at a pace that everybody um, can join or is this, do most people just prefer to watch? And if there's not a strong preference, we'll just go ahead and move forward. Um, so I am gonna share an agenda with everybody. And let's go ahead and share the screen. All right, so if you guys can see my screen, I'll go into present mode. And today we are going to talk about Sunbird, what we do, and then we're gonna build a simple chat app, and then we're gonna configure um, and customize that app and build on top of it um, and add some end-to-end -end encryption um, for, for more privacy for your users. Um, so first of all, uh, let's go through our agenda. Um, we're going to talk about what we can build. Um, Sendbird customers have a variety of different, different use cases. Um, you can do a lot of different flexible things with Sendbird. Um, why I chose end-to-end -end encryption for this demo and why you might be interested in adding that to your chat application. Um, getting started um, with a simple app using our UI kit, we can get chat up and running in under five minutes. Uh, then customizing that UI kit um, so that it would fit, uh, for example, uh, with whatever existing applications you had or any special uh, chat ne needs you had when developing your application. And then finally, we're going to see one integration you can do with Sunbird. Um, the nice thing um, about a chat API is we provide the chat and then if there's other services uh, that you need that make your app more functional or work um, better or how you need it to. Um, it's really easy to integrate great Sendbird with a lot of existing APIs. Um, so first of all, what can you build with Sendbird? So there's a wide range of customers uh, for, for Sendbird and they all have a bunch of different use cases. And I think the nature of that is it's so flexible, you can build almost any type of chat with it. Some examples are communities, um, like online forums and chat rooms, um, healthcare. So if you're doing, especially uh, nowadays, if you uh, are a healthcare company and you want to add telehealth to your application, um, Sendbird's a great choice for that. Um, in addition to that, we also see customer support so it doesn't necessarily need to be healthcare um, but it can be uh, like agent ticketing um, things like that on-demand delivery is another big one we see um, banking and fintech apps um, also marketplaces um, so yeah my key point here a lot of different use cases hopefully some of uh, uh, you that are here in the session today um, have overlapping needs um, to some of our existing use cases we've seen. Uh, but if not, what's great is um, you can customize uh, Sendbird to, to fit exactly what you need. Um, and then why did I choose end-to-end -end encryption for this workshop? A um, few different reasons. Um, so Sendbird itself is already very secure. Um, we use industry, industry standards like HTTPS and TLS to secure your communication. We have a lot of different certifications and we comply with a lot of different uh, regulations, including HIPAA, SOC 2, um, and then some of the other ones you see here. Uh, but why might you want to add another layer of protection or encryption on top of there? Um, one reason would be um, it's just kind of table stakes at this point. If, you, if your primary use case is 
uh, a chat application itself where the primary benefit is uh, chat and it's not necessarily integrated um, with other functionality. Um, you're competing against uh, applications like WhatsApp and Signal um, and they advertise end-to-end uh, -end encryption out of the box. And that's something you wanna be able to offer your customers as well. Uh, another use case would be regulation. If you're in a regulated industry, I think banking, banking comes to mind, but I think nowadays um, really that there's a wide variety of options. Um, and if you're in a regulated industry, um, having this extra peace of mind uh, is great to have. Um, and then there's also, maybe you're just very privacy conscious or you wanna look out for your customers and offer them what's best uh, in their best interest and give them that extra comfort and peace of mind. I think these last two really go hand in hand. Um, you don't need to particularly have um, an extra need, but having more privacy uh, can only benefit your customers and make your product more compelling. Um, so what we're gonna do to start is we're gonna build a simple application. We're just gonna start with basic chat and then we'll build on it from there. So let me switch over and I just have an empty folder here. Um, looks like a few more people have joined. Um, how many of you guys, I asked this at the beginning, but are most people following along and coding along? Um, or do you just wanna see the application get built? Uh, I think that'll kind of dictate uh, what pace we go at, um, but either option's fine. Cool, well, we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, I'm gonna build this application using React um, and we will start with something really bare bones. And let's actually talk about the application we're gonna build today. Um, so I just named this application client because um, this is gonna be really similar to a setup that a lot of Sunbird customers have. They'll have some type of backend infrastructure and API um, that supports other actions and operations um, that may already exist for their application. And then they'll have one or more uh, different front end or client applications. Um, so Sunbird has, in it, we're using React today. Um, so this is our JavaScript SDK, uh, but we have a number of uh, client SDKs, um, including Android and iOS, um, Upcoming, we have Flutter. Um, and so whatever kind of client-facing application you're gonna build, um, this is a really common use case we see. Um, and we're gonna build the client app to start, and then we'll see how having a backend uh, can allow you to expand um, and build on the app. Um, so now we just have a simple React app, and let's go ahead and start the app. And I will bring my browser in here so we can see what we're building as we go. Um, and if you guys want to follow along or want to sneak preview, um, you can see the finished application here. I just posted it in the chat. And that's what we're gonna be building today. And then let's open uh, my old Nemesis presentation that I've got me again. All right. And we just have an empty React app here. And let's see how quick and easy it is to get chat started. So I'm going to add another terminal to my IDE. And let's install Sendbird's UI kit. Oops. Done that twice so far, but it wouldn't be a demo without it. So 
So let's go into the right folder and try again. All right, so we can see uh, we just added SendBirds UI kit. Um, we're using version two. And let's go into the root directory here and go to our application. And we don't need this React logo anymore. So I am going to go ahead and get rid of that. Um, this application, um, because we're just going to build chat today, um, this is going to be kind of the container that holds our whole application. There's not going to be a lot of navigation. Um, and so what we're going to do, chat makes sense in full screen. Um, so we're just going to make this container the height of the screen. And then we're going to go create a new component. And let's name it chat. And this doesn't need to take any properties right now. And let's return, or I'm sorry, let's import All right, so the UI kit exports a few components. Um, one of the components is a fully built app, and that's what we're going to start with. Um, and then it also can, we can break that down into um, some smaller kind of building block apps um, that, that we'll talk about and we'll see as we move forward. Um, and then it also includes um, some CSS to hopefully make this look nice. Like, but I guess we'll find out as we go along. And let's show that app component. And we'll hit save and nothing should happen. Because we need an application ID, we need some users. Um, so I'm going to head over to the SendBird website. Um, and if you are just first visiting this, you probably don't have an account. You're more than welcome to sign up. Um, I'm going to log in with an account that already exists. And you have a few options. You can create a new application. So let's go ahead, create one. And you can select your region. Um, so SendBird, it's a really global company. We um, have customers all over the world, and we also have in infrastructure all over the world. And we usually recommend you pick whatever region um, is closest to you and your users. Um, so for me, that would probably be Oregon or um, maybe Virginia would make sense for me too if I had uh, more customers on the East Coast. Um, but because I already have it built, I'm going to use an existing app. Um, it's an empty app. I have one user. It's myself. Um, and this is a moderator. Um, and then Sunbird is made up of channels. This is where people talk. There are open channels. Um, and I like to think of that like an old school chat room um, from the 90s where um, anybody can join. Membership is kind of ephemeral. Um, and you're just talking really fast. Um, a good use case for that that we see pretty often is going to be uh, like live gaming or uh, live sports, definitely live events. Then there's group channels. Group channels have like permanent membership. Um, so let's think back to uh, one of the use cases we talked about um, in the opening slide deck. Uh, that was uh, on-demand delivery. Um, think like food delivery apps. Uh, maybe it's your local pizza company. Maybe it's a big uh, global company that that uh, is a lot bigger than your local pizza place. 
but usually, it's so, so think about who's going to be in that channel. It's probably going to be the delivery driver uh, and the customer, and they're having a conversation between each other. Uh, but when they message each other, they're really messaging the channel, and the members of the channel uh, can see uh, the different messages that get posted to the channel. Um, so we don't have either of those yet. We will have some shortly. But what I do need here is going to be my application ID from my new app. So let's go here and our, oh, if you were following along, some of you may have noticed a mistake that I got ahead of myself and I aliased this uh, component, um, but I didn't use it here. Uh, let's go back to our app. It still probably shouldn't be working. Oops. But this will take a few properties, one being oops, the app ID that I just copied. And let's do a user ID. Let me use my own name and a nickname. I know that's cutting off the screen there a little bit. And let's see. And then I expected this to work, but we realized we're not uh, using our component we just built anywhere. So now we have to go back into our container. Um, it's just we're going to use the app component for now. Keep things simple. And let's import. So we can get rid of this. And let's import that component we just made. Now, let me save it. We should have a chat application. And it sounds like a few of you came from the Auth0 uh, workshop before. So it sounds like I have the same curse that suddenly people's uh, computers start going slower when there's eyes on the screen. Uh, so we have an app. Um, it's pretty boring. I don't have any channels. I'm logged in as Alex. Um, let's create a channel. And as I mentioned before, there's group channels. There's also super group channels. Um, this is kind of the best of both worlds for some use cases. We talked about open channels where it is um, kind of like a chat room. Uh, super group channels have the advantages of those, but with permanent membership. Um, but they allow you uh, to have a large number um, of members up in the thousands um, that are chatting. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a group channel. Um, and my only option to invite to this channel right now is the other Alex or user that we saw at the beginning, and that's the moderator user. Let's go ahead and create a channel. And we, you might've noticed we didn't have a sign in. So if I open up another tab, it's just going to log me in as Alex again, because um, it's hard coded. But what I can do is I can send a message to the channel. And then if I go to my Sendbird dashboard and go and look at my channels. Um, so what's really cool about Sendbird is one of the uh, features that's really beneficial uh, is going to be uh, our moderation features. Um, it allows you to interact with your users um, from uh, kind of the more admin side of things. Uh, but we'll see how end to end encryption impacts that uh, as we move forward. So I'm just going to say hi. And let's go back. And my user um, received a message. And I also see that the message I sent, I see a couple check box boxes that the message was delivered. If I want, I can react to it with emojis. Um, I have a lot of options. So uh, if it wasn't for my talking, uh, you'll see we have in about five minutes, we have a chat application up and running. Um, now we want to build on that. We want to add some functionality. So let's see. Next, let's add, let's add a backend. So we have our client folder. And 
Let's add an API folder and we'll add another terminal. And we'll just skip through these prompts. Um, and now we have another application here. And we need server. And I'm just going to use Express. So let's, let's install Express and Nodemon to keep this running. And we'll add basic app. Let's do Since I shared that repo with you guys, actually to save us some time, we're not doing anything exciting here. I'm gonna save a little bit of time and we're gonna copy and paste. We now have an express server and we need to go into our package JSON and add a script and let's name it start. And we will uh, all right, that should do it. So we have a server running now, doesn't do anything. Um, but the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add, and this really uh, following off zero for this is never fun, but uh, we are gonna add a some fake authentication. There's gonna be no password, you're just gonna give us a username. Um, and what this is going to be used for is um, you saw uh, when I logged in as Alex, it created a new user for me. Um, so we want to lock that down. We want to restrict that and instead have users uh, access SendBird with a token. Um, and then additionally, we are going to use a third party uh, company called Virgil um, for the encryption portion of this application. Um, and they require tokens to access that part of your application as well. So this server is gonna serve the purpose of um, give us the information that we need. Um, so let's see here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a login method to the server. And we need a couple environment variables too. So let's add those now. And we need yet another terminal. All right, and for right now, let's just do that. And we'll need a couple environment variables. We're gonna have our SendBird app ID and our API token. So let's go to our settings and you'll see my app ID. And then I'm gonna share my API token with you as well. We can go ahead and change that later. All right, so I have a couple environment variables and let's add them to the server. So we need to configure .env. Uh, 
All right, and we're gonna get to something exciting here in just a second. We're gonna add login, we're gonna add sign up. Um, and then once we get through that, um, we're gonna go ahead and go back to our client application. Um, and we're gonna add some methods to uh, start logging in um, and then start encrypting the messages um, as we send them. So let's go ahead And I'm going to speed up. I'm just looking at the time here. I'm going to add a couple methods here. So we need to add Okay, we're going to add a body parser and Let's see. What did I do here? All right, well, it wouldn't be a demo without it. I don't, oh, we got an error. That's okay. Get rid of that. And let's try again. Okay, we'll add one at a time. There we go. All right, and we're gonna build this server super quickly in the interest of time. So what we'll want to do, we'll add our body parser and our fetch. The fetch is going to allow us to make an API call to SendBird um, and log in the, for an existing user, or we can get their um, access token. So let's create an express post endpoint. We'll just call it login. And what that is going to do is in the body it's going to have a user id and that's it we're not asking for any other credentials and then we're going to call a method called get sendbird user that's going to retrieve the user from sendbird for us we're going to pull out the access token and then we're going to return it return it to our client app so let's go ahead and add this as well getting our sendbird user um, this is the endpoint um, so you're going to have a base url here that we need to define. So there's going to be a few constants we add here. Um, going to have your app ID. This comes from the environment variable, same as the uh, API token. Um, and then you're going to have a base URL, which is your app ID at sendbird.com. And you're going to have a few headers. Um, and what that will do is that is just going to make a get request for that user to sendbird. It is going to put those headers in to authenticate. Um, and then it's going to return a response to login, which is going to send this back to the client. So that should be doing the trick. Let's go ahead and go back to our uh, client app. And so what we'll do, we're going to create a new folder here. And let's call it utils. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to add a hook for uh, calling these login methods. And let's go ahead and call this auth. Okay, so we're going to, this is going to be a React hook. So we need to import React, we need to import context, and then further down, we're going to use the context. Uh, we also need a provider. This is going to make this available to components further down the tree. Um, so let's get that guy. All right. And finally, we want the hook. Okay, and what do we need to do? We just created on our server, we created a login method. Um, so let's create a login method here too, that's gonna call that endpoint. Let's go.
All right, that's going to take a user ID as a parameter. Um, and let's have it. OK, so it's going to make a request to our login endpoint. It's going to be post request. Um, and it's going to pass the user ID. And then it's going to get that access token back. Um, and we need to make that available to uh, components that use our hook. So what we want to do is we are going to uh, return an object with uh, the login context um, in there. And this still won't quite work, but we're getting close. Uh, the last thing that's missing is we need to set up a proxy. Our API server is running on port 8080. Uh, localhost is running on 3000. So let's go ahead and add a proxy. And we'll just copy and paste this guy too. All right. And does anybody in chat, does anybody have any questions so far? Do you want me to speed up a little bit, slow down? How are people doing? Cool, I'll take no, no news is good news. Um, so we'll keep going forward. Um, so now what we need is we need a component to log in. Um, so let's go back into, let's move this in here. And then let's go back. Um, ch -ch -ch. Let's create login component. This is also going to be a React component. All right. And what do we need in here? That's just going to be a simple form. We're going to div. All right. We're going to have an input. And the name is going to be a user ID. Let's create another one that's nickname. And let's add a button. All right, let's do login. And now we have that hook available to call our login method. So this is when we're gonna be able to start seeing things in our application again. So let's import um let's import our auth hook all right and then let's use it we needed to pass it a well, we need the login method <clears throat> And what else do we need? We need to get the, we need a method for when we log in. So we're gonna use the login method that we got from this hook and speed us up a little bit. Let's walk through what this does. So maybe we should call it first. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and when we submit the form by clicking this button, then it is going to call this login method. Um, and it'll pass the event uh, over. And when a form submits, we don't want the page to refresh. So we're going to stop that. But we do want data from the form. We want the user ID and the nickname. We're only using the user ID right now for login. And we're going to get, once this resolves, we're going to get an access token back. And we are going to pass that. to our parent component that is going to uh, contain this login, which is going to be app. 
Um, and then it's gonna navigate to uh, the chat page. So we need a little bit of navigation. Um, let's install a dependency for some navigation. All right, and this is a hook as well. So let's do okay. So now we can push to the history, um, and what we need now is we need to pass this set config to the login, and we're going to do that in our app component, um, and we need to use state for that. So uh, all right. And we're going to have state that is named config. This is going to hold our user ID, nickname, etc. Um, and we're just going to initialize it as uh, an empty object. And we will, let's add a router. So we need a few things uh, from React Router DOM. We need a router, a route, and a switch. And let's add those super quick. So we have a router that is going to navigate. And this chat is going to be one of our routes. And now we can add another route that is going to be login. So let's add that login component. All right. And it needs set config. And we need to give these routes a path. Actually, just make this root and we'll have a chat route as well. So, one thing we're missing we are missing a provider for our uh, hook. So, let's go add that first and let's add that to let's add that right here. So we need to import this from the utils. All right, and let's just wrap our app in that. All right. And now we should be able to log in if I did this correctly, which I did not. So let's go back to off and We are just going to adjust this a tiny bit. Oh, we weren't returning anything. No wonder. Um, so here's our provider. Um, and hopefully after that, we should be in better shape. OK, we now have a little login form, but it doesn't look very good. Uh, let's super quickly adjust this. Name that login. Uh, let's add some labels. We'll add one here. 
and let's name this nickname. All right, that looks a little better. Nothing great, um, but now when we click login, let's see what happens. So my user's name was Alex, and I log in, and it didn't like something that I did. All right, let's go to the login component here. And what do we need? Well, I am uncertain why it doesn't like this. Let's see if we can figure it out real quick. Thank you for your patience, everybody. All right, well, let's fast forward. Gonna make sure we have a working login component. All right, let's see what we got in that. Hmm, how about this hook? Well, we are a little bit stuck and I'm a little bit flustered. This is one of my first ones of these. Uh, and I apologize. What I'm gonna do uh, for the sake of time, um, I think we have about five more minutes. Um, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do a walkthrough of the existing repo, show you um, what we did to um, add and uh, build on the app how we added encryption, and then I'll show you uh, a working sample. Um, appreciate everybody's patience here. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna swap my screen here. And we'll make this full screen. Move this over here. And let's go ahead and kill the app we've been working on. And let's look at our existing app. Um, so I'll walk you guys through, we have a few more minutes. You can see step-by-step step what we did. Um, and then uh, please go, feel free to go check out the repo after the fact, uh, and we'll do a quick demo. Um, so we have, we are at this login component stage. So let's say we get login working. What other steps do we do? We are going to then add registration. Um, you need to be able to create users with Sendbird. Um, you need to, uh, then we're gonna, we would use a third party package uh, called Virgil. Uh, they're a great company and they'll do key management for you. Um, so this takes a lot of the complexity out of uh, encryption out of your hands and they'll manage it for you. Um, so you don't need to worry, what happens if I lose my key? What if my key gets compromised? Uh, am I using the right type of encryption? Uh, they'll handle a lot of cases like that um, for you. And we will see how that happens here in just a second. And then what we do is we add to the API. We were getting from the Sendbird API, we were getting the access token. Additionally, we need to get a token from Virgil. Um, we also need to install, they have a cool SDK called the E3 kit. 
Um, that handles all the encryption and storing the keys uh, locally on your devices and caching them. And then if you lose the device or you have a multi-device scenario, they're gonna recover the device. Um, what else do we have? And just for context, I'm sure you figured it out by now, but I'm just going through my commit history, trying to walk you through a timeline um, of uh, kind of what this process uh, looks like start to finish since we didn't get a chance to see the full thing. Um, and then what we can do, what's cool about Sunbird is we had, let's go to this chat component here, where we just define the Sunbird app. Way down at this step, what we're going to do is we're going to split that out into subcomponents now. So rather than having just an application component, we have we can break that out into the list of channels. We can break that out into the channel view where you send and receive messages. Um, and then finally, like a setting screen if you want to add or remove users from channels. Um, and then we have another hook. And that hook, what it's going to do is it's going to interact with Virgil's E3 kit. Um, it can create and load groups, which are very similar to Sendbird channels. Um, so users get added to groups, and they also get added to uh, the Sendbird channel. And then if they leave the Sendbird channel, we don't return the messages to those users. But let's say for some reason they had them cached on their device uh, or something like that um but they had them cached in the format they received them in those messages would be encrypted um and unless they had access to the group they couldn't decrypt them later um, assuming they are caching they probably cached them decrypted um, it's a silly example um, but that's kind of how groups work is you can control access um, from two different ways so whenever you create a sendbird channel you need to create a group as well. So we can see here that when you, so there's all these properties on these components. These components are imported from the UI kit. So for example, the channel list, that's where you see your list of channels that you're a member of. You're going to say, hey, what action do I want to do before a channel is created? You can add all this logic. It hooks into our E3 kit hook that we created. And then anytime a channel is created, it's going to create a corresponding uh, E3 group, which we can see here. Uh, uses their SDK. You call create group with a group ID, which is going to correspond to the Sendbird channel URL. Um, and you're going to be good to go. Um, so making this extensible and easy to customize um, is really beneficial. Um, makes it easy to add on to um, and keeps Sendbird in sync with some of your third party uh, APIs you might be hooking into, like Virgil. Um, and then you're going to send and receive encrypted messages. We can see again here um, in the message input, um, this little box where you're typing and you click send. Um, this is another example of, hey, it's really easy to hook into Sunbird and use the UI kit. <clears throat> so you, we have a method like send user method, send user message. Um, and what you can do is, if we can find where we did that. All right. So we can, when we're showing the uh, message input, um, we can give our own custom message input component just inside the channel. And that way, if we need to modify or encrypt the message before sending, um, we can use our own component to do that and vice versa. For decrypting, um, we do something very similar. And that is going to be up here. And so when we're rendering a message, again, there's just a property called render chat item. It's time to uh, show your message. And you say, hey, how do I want to show it? And what I want to do is I want to decrypt the message before I show it. Um, so in this example, we are 
decrypting it every time the component's rendered. Um, in reality, if we're trying to speed things up, I know we're already over on time. If we're trying to speed things up, um, or, or if we had more time, uh, what you could do is you'd probably uh, want to store those somewhere um, where they can be re reused and, uh, and not have to be decrypted each time uh, they're rendered. So I'm going to open up a couple terminals here. Um, this is the same app structure um, as what we were working on. We have an API and we have a client. And then we have a little cheat sheet for me here. All right. So let's start our server. And let's go ahead. and start our client. And we'll be able to see another demo and we'll see this working um, from start to finish. And we need to add some credentials. We didn't quite make it to that step. So let's go here, make an app called API days, sign in first. All right, and I'm gonna create some keys very quickly. And we can add this to our, oops. And we'll just add that new key here for our new application. Let's try that one more time. All right. And you guys all now have my secret key. That's okay. The key has an ID. And there is an application ID. Let's see. Where are you? And of course I can't find, it. there we go. There's our application ID. All right, that should be the last thing we need. Then let's just go ahead and restart the API. And now that that's started, we have a client and a server up and running, and it should be on port 3000. So let's go back to our browser, hit refresh. That looks familiar. A um, little bit different. We added a, uh, I added a checkbox where if we need to create the user, we can. Let's also restrict send bird users to only be able to log in if they have an API token, or I'm sorry, an access token. So I'm gonna log in as Alice, and let's open up another tab, and I'm gonna log in as Bob, and let's create his user too. And I don't have any channels, but now I have two users and let's have them chat. So Alice is gonna create a channel with Bob. She's gonna say, hey Bob. And we have a placeholder here for a second. Oh, let's try to log in as Bob one more time. Well, this demo is just off to a swell start. I probably have one of my credentials defined wrong. Looks like I do.
and I don't know what to do right now. Let's uh, see if we can figure out what's going on. <clears throat> okay, it did not register our user when we created a user, it looks like. I wonder why that is. That probably means one of our credentials is incorrect. Uh, let's try to generate our keys one more time. We can trash that. Let's create some new keys. Go delete our Sunbird users. And we'll try again. All right, so we saved our key. Have our key ID. And then if we remember the app ID is in the settings section. Let's restart our server one more time, cross our fingers and see if we get lucky. Get rid of any changes that aren't supposed to be in here. We start our client and restart both tabs. Let's create our users. And let's see if we can create a channel now. Get that channel with Bob again. Yeah, and I'm not registering my users with Virgil. I must have something uh, wrong with my credentials. Again, I really appreciate everyone's time today. Um, I'm a little bit embarrassed. Uh, and I don't, I'm happy to take any questions, um, talk about anything you'd like. I highly recommend go download the repo, give it a try yourself. I bet you'll have better. Uh, luck than I do uh, without an audience. Um, but yeah, I don't think we're going to get this running today, even though step one was test this right before I started. Um, so again, I, I really appreciate your time. Uh, I feel a little silly. Uh, but I think we are uh, kind of at the end of the road here. Well, I see there are some other send people, Sunbird people in the room. Um, promise that they will, uh, they'll be better support to you than this was today. And uh, yeah, really appreciate everybody's time. I'm going to go ahead and end the workshop. Um, hope everybody has a good one. Thanks. Bye-bye.